Welcome to Sealing God's People with your host, Dennis Beard. Taking a look at Revelation 15. What's going to befall thy people in the last days? Well, we see there's the Song of Moses and the Song of the Lamb, which are the redeemed. When we see there's a sign in heaven. Now, the sign is a sealing for those that will receive it. It's a signet, a sign, S-I-G-N, E-T, a signet, R, a sign, S-I-G-N, E-T, aloft, tov, that is the aloft through the tov. It's the A to the Z in the attributes of God. Now, that means Zerubbabel is the signet. You'll see that in Haggai 2. And it's on the 21st day of the seventh month that we see Haggai, the peace prophet, the festive prophet, that states that God will shake all nations and the desire of all nations will come. Then he said, all the silver and gold is mine. He makes a statement. I will make the glory of the latter house greater than that of the former. Speaking of the latter rain. And he will come to us as a rain, the former and the latter rain, if we follow on to know the Lord. In Revelation 15, we see that these redeemed the sing the song of Moses. Now, why the song of Moses? It's a Shura Kahadash. That is a feminine song. It starts when a person comes out of Egypt or out of the world. So we see that in Exodus 15. That begins the Song of Moses. Miriam takes a tam- tambourine, a tabret, and leads the congregation there in the Song of Moses and the Song of Victory. It starts the wilderness journey. That is all of us going through testings and trials in this earth as pilgrims and strangers in the world. Not of the world, but in the world. Then as we overcome the world, the devil and our own flesh, then we pass through the different trials and temptations all the way till we get to the Jordan River. The Jordan River then is when we're going to go over that Jordan, that is the descender of Dan, and go into the promised land. And that's at Kadesh Barnea, Kadesh Sanctuary Bar, Uh, that Chaldean for son. So it is Kadesh Barnea, the house of a disobedient son. There we are to sanctify ourselves. And that is the consummation of the end of the Song of Moses. So it's kind of like a bookend. It starts when you come out of the world, going into the full measure of the statue of Jesus Christ. There in your whole life, doing the will of God, overcoming the world, the devil, and your own flesh unto perfection. That covers the whole work from beginning to the ending in your life, which will end in you singing the song of the Lamb. The song of the Lamb is masculine. That means that you have overcome and you have redeemed, been redeemed and received your salvation. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. As we take a look at the Song of Moses, there we see in Exodus 15 it started, but then after they've been through testing and trial, all the tribes of Israel wind up in Kadesh Barnea, and then Moses is given this song. And it is talk about this song of Moses. And you'll see it in Deuteronomy 31 and verse 19. Now, therefore, write you this song for you and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. Now, why? Why? For whom I shall have brought them into, when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth of milk and honey, 
and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, watch what happens, and waxen fat, then will they turn unto other gods. Here we are back again, denying the only Lord God. There's only one Lord God, Jesus Christ, who is uh, the Jehovah Lord God Almighty, the Elohim, the Father of glory. We denied that. We've turned unto other gods uh, through these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, these perverse things that have been brought into the body of Christ that Jude tells us were to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Where did we go wrong? No one in the early church and in all the Old Testament prophets, not one believed there was a Trinity God. It did not come into being uh, until that questioning Jesus on his God, that he is the Godhead, he is the Father of glory, he is God manifest. They just didn't get it. They don't get it today. And what is that? They came to Jesus, the Pharisees of that day, said, Jesus, you bear record to yourself. Your record is not true. In other words, you're not God. You're just a man. The record, there's three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. They're one in the self-same spirit. There, they're questioning Jesus that he's only a man and he's not God. He's not a deliverer. He's not the Savior. He's not our Redeemer. You bear record to yourself. Jesus, your record's not true. That's what the Pharisees are stating. Jesus said, though I bear record of myself, my record is true because I am not alone. I am my Father that sent me. It's written in your law, the testimony of two men is true. I'm one that beareth witness of myself, and my Father that sent me, he beareth witness of me. There's your two witnesses. That's the testimony of Jesus, which is for us in the last days, Revelation 11, that we, the body of Christ, are the witnesses. The body of Christ, they're in the power given to. The body of Christ, the two olive trees, the two candlesticks, which is nothing but the church. It's not two men walking around. It is the man the Jesus, which is the Father of glory, that man being Jesus the Father, the Spirit of God, the Lord is that Spirit, and the body of Christ, that which is the flesh of Jesus. Now, to understand that, we have to understand that what is that doctrine of Christ? Christ is God. Christ is the Father. Christ is the Word. Christ is the Holy Ghost. Christ is the Son of God. Christ is the Son of Man. Christ is every office of the Spirit. That's the doctrine of Christ. Christ is that Spirit. We see it in 1 Peter 1, verse 10 and 11. We'll refer to that over and over again because that is the foundation of the church which has been attacked by the devil with seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, denying the only Lord God, and it's called an antichrist, something in lieu of Christ that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Where did we go wrong? Well, Christ is that spirit. We see that in 1 Peter 1, verse 10 and 11. The Old Testament prophets, all of them, Samuel, Moses, Samuel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, all the way to Malachi prophesied by the Spirit of Christ that was in them. Peter states that in 1 Peter 1, verse 10 and 11. When it signified beforehand, when it testified of the sufferings of Christ, not Christ Jr., not a separate person of the Godhead, but Christ himself. The Christ, the Spirit of God, Father, Word, Holy Ghost, El Shaddai, Elohim, made himself a body of flesh and blood, 
Christ the man. Christ the man is Christ the spirit. Now, to understand that, that Jesus came in under his own law as a man. To do that, he had to make himself of no reputation. So we're back to Philippians 2, 6 again. Jesus, who being in the form of God, everything that God is, from the loft to the top, the age to the sea, all of his attributes, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Why? Because he is every attribute that God is. God is love. God is power. God is wisdom. God is understanding. God is prudence. God is peace. Jesus is all of those attributes, and they're equal. And Jesus, who being in the form of God, that spirit, that one spirit of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Why? Because he is love. He is wisdom. He is power, wisdom, understanding, that glory, peace, all that God is, is equal. And there you understand it's the attributes of God, not persons, but attributes. We see that in Proverbs 8. God is wisdom. But he speaks of it in a singular personal pronoun. I, wisdom, was daily his delight. Speaking of God in the third person. Well, God is wisdom. That's one of his attributes. But that's not another person. That is his attribute. And with me, wisdom said, is understanding. There's another attribute of God. And there is that wisdom there with me is understanding. Well, there's wisdom, understanding, there is prudence. All these are attributes. And we see God created the heaven and earth by himself alone. And we see that in Isaiah 44, 24. Span the heaven by myself and the earth alone. He did not use the angelic force. He did not speak the Father to speaking to the Son of the Holy Ghost. He was speaking of his attributes that all he is. So God said, let us make man in our own image. Plural personal pronoun. How did he do it? Well, Genesis 1, So God made man in his own image. Male and female created he, them. Singular personal pronoun. Well, because that's the attributes of God. Jesus, in all those attributes, are equal with God because wisdom, love, power, understanding, prudent, peace, all of these are equal. And Jesus, who being in the form of God and not did not think it robbery to be equal with God in all attributes, made himself of no reputation, laid aside those attributes, every one of them, laid aside love, laid aside the power, laid aside peace, laid aside wisdom, laid aside understanding, and made himself of no reputation in a self-imposed limitation, took on him the form of a servant. That servant's made an under the law. That man is made an under law to redeem us that were under the law. And to do that, he is tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin. So Jesus is that spirit, made himself of no reputation, come under his own law to work as a man to fulfill his law. Not as God, but as a man. And you'll see that in Isaiah 59, 16. Isaiah 63, 5. God looked for a man. He was amazed he could find none. All his sin comes short of the glory of God. None good, no, not one. All conceived in sin, shaping in iniquity. Therefore, his own arm of flesh brought salvation to myself, God said. Well, God made himself a body of flesh and blood. The man coming into the world, the word made flesh, is under the law to redeem us that are under the law. Galatians 4, verse 4 and 5. There is a man. He fulfills the law as a man that's emptied out of glory as spirit, even though he is the spirit of God and did not cease and desist from being that spirit. The law still was a metal wall parting Jesus, his spirit, from his own body of flesh and blood as a man. God manifests in the flesh, but the law is still there and will be there 
until Jesus dies on the cross. Being tempted at all points like we are yet without sin, not failing, not missing the mark in his body, soul, or spirit, the perfect spotless blameless lamb of God and declared to be the son of God. That body of flesh in his body, soul, and human spirit spotless before God in his own in his own body of flesh but the spirit that he is is divided by the law and from his own body of flesh and blood when you see that revelation that God made himself of no reputation to become a man made an under law to redeem us under the law then after he fulfilled that law as a man not as God but as a man Tempted at all points like as we are. God can't be tempted, but he's tempted as a man. Then he takes the ordinances of that law, nails it to his cross, breaks down the middle wall of partition, and there joins his spirit to his own body of flesh and blood, glorifying his own body of flesh back to where it was before. How be it? Before he sits down with the Father in his throne, the Lord there at the right hand of God has prepared a place for us. And you'll see that in Ephesians 1. That's what Jesus wrought to usward when he set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Well, is Jesus the Father of glory? Yes, he is. You see that in John 2, 19. Jesus stated, destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. Now, no man can raise up his own body after it's dead, except he be God. And Jesus did that. He said, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. The Jews said, 40 and six years were they in building this temple. You're going to raise it up in three days. Jesus spake of the temple of his body. Then he rose it in three days and declared himself to be the son of God through the spirit by the resurrection from the dead. That proved he is God. God manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Jesus glorifying his own human back to himself, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. There we are now the body of the Christ. Now we pray you in Christ's stead, giving us the word of reconciliation, be you reconciled to God. We are the body of the Christ now. We are the feet generation. The heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool, and uh, the feet generation is the current church, the body of Christ. And there he says in that song of Moses that we, because a captain of our salvation, glorifying his own human back to himself, breaking down the middle wall of partition, the law, thereby making peace and one new man. Who's the new man? The quickening spirit. Jesus Christ, the man, 1 Corinthians 15, 45, has been made a quickening spirit. The Lord is that spirit. He is the father of glory. He is set down with the father in his own throne. Revelation 3.21. Well, what does it mean to us? Well, just as Jesus was tempted in the days of his flesh and crucified his flesh with the affections and the lust, showing us the way, the truth, and the light, making the captain of our salvation perfect through suffering, having learned obedience through the things which he suffered, we are told by Peter we're doing the same thing. Following our Lord as he is our example, he is the way, the truth, and the light, that we walk in the light as he is in the light, crucifying our flesh, mortifying the deeds of the flesh through the Spirit of God. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So 1 Peter 4, 1 says, For as much then as Christ have suffered for us in the flesh, in the days of his flesh he suffered. Be ye therefore likewise minded. 
for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. It makes an end of sin. Why? Because you mortify the deeds of the flesh through obedience to the Holy Ghost unto righteousness. In Romans 6, whosoever you yield your members of servants to obey, him of the servants to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness, which will then yield the peaceable fruits of holiness, being protectors of Jesus, his divine nature. How do you get there? Through this exceedingly great and precious promises given to us of, through obedience that were made partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world through lust. You did that by mortifying the deeds of the flesh. You crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. You did not conform to this world. You were transformed by the renewing of your mind that you could prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for you is. And the ones that are doing that will be the one that will be used of God in this last day work of the ministry for this gospel of the kingdom of God will be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations and then the end will come. But the song of Moses testifies against us in the latter days that in the church itself, the true body of Christ, there will be these certain men that will creep in unawares, that were foreordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our Lord Jesus into lasciviousness. Unnatural, unlawful affections. We're set our affections on the things above, but they have turned it of setting our affections on the things beneath in the world, saying we can have the world, and Jesus wants us to have the world. Be conformed to the world. Feel good about yourself. Don't crucify yourself with the affections and the lust. Just build up yourself upon your worldly self. And that is damnable. It's a damnable heresy. It's a lie. And we're told that Jesus is love and everybody's going to heaven. And that is a straight out lie. They belied the Lord. They turned the grace of our Lord Jesus into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God, saying there's a trinity or that there's twoness. The Lord said unto my Lord, being two, or then there's a oneness doctrine. The man's not God, but is at the right hand of God. But the spirit is still in the man, Jesus. Literally, but redeeming the world back to himself. And that is a lie. That, that redeeming quality is Christ in us, the body of Christ now. Jesus has sat down with the Father in his throne, glorified with the Father's own self. He is that quickening spirit. The Lord is that spirit, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Somebody said, well, he's the mediator. The Holy Ghost is. Well, it's the man Christ Jesus. Yes, the man has been made a quickening spirit. You see that in 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Well, there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Yes, that anthropos is that man Jesus that made that intercession for the transgressors at the cross. It happened at the cross, not now. You'll see in Romans 8 that it says no man knows how he ought to pray. But the Holy Ghost itself, the Spirit of God itself, Christ itself, maketh intercession for us. The Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. Who's making intercession? The mediator. Who is that? The Spirit. Who is that? Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God. Make it the intercession for us according to the will of God with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit itself. Not the man Christ Jesus in a glorified body of flesh and bone. No. The Spirit itself maketh intercession. And that's where we missed it. 
that he alone is God and is not another. He is the Father of glory, just as he stated in John 8, 24. Except you believe that I am he, the Father of glory, you shall die in your sin. He claims that he is the Father. He also states that again, Jesus stating that no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Jesus standing there before his disciples and stated he's in heaven. Why? Because he is that spirit. Well, they sing the song of the Lamb because they understand that there is only but one God. And this will be witness against those that have gone after a trinity, two-ness, or oneness doctrine to be a witness in the latter days that we have served other gods. The man Christ Jesus is the Father. That is the doctrine of Christ. Very simple. It's a mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, but that mystery is now revealed. As Paul stated, that mystery of Christ as it is now revealed by his holy apostles and prophets. Colossians 2, 1 through 9, Paul gives us that mystery. The mystery of God and the Father and of Christ in him are hid. All treasures of wisdom and knowledge. What now is revealed? Well, God has shown forth his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure. What treasure? Well, in him is hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Well, now, what? Well, God's shown his glory in the face of Jesus Christ, but we have this treasure. The body of Christ has this treasure in earthen vessels, in the flesh, here in the earth right now, declaring Christ in us the hope of glory. We have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of ourselves. This Christ in us, we're living epistles, we're a chosen generation, we'll royal priesthood. What does it reveal? The Lord is that spirit. 2 Corinthians 3.17. There's the basic doctrine of Christ. Jesus, the Lord, is that spirit. Not spirit junior. Not a second person of the Godhead. He is that spirit. He is the Father of glory. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Why? To get us there. The forerunners already entered in. Sat down with the Father in. Not around it. Not beside it. But in his throne. Revelation 3.21. Glorified with the Father's own self. John 17.5. He is the blessed and only potentate. The omnipotent. 1 Timothy 6.15 16. The blessed and only potentate. Jesus Christ. The omnipotent. Almighty. Omniscient. All-knowing. Omnipresent. Everywhere. God Almighty. Who only hath their mortality. Jesus only denying the only Lord God. That's what they have brought in. Damnable heresies, perverse things. Bring it upon themselves swift destruction. Second Peter, second chapter, verse one, two, and three states that. Denying the only Lord God. The epistle of Jude says that. Denying the only Lord Jesus. Our Lord God Almighty. And that's what the song of Moses is written about. The ones that sing the song of Moses that have the right are the redeemed of the Lord. And though they're tempted, tried, their faith being tried as by fire comes forth as pure gold. Christ is revealed in and through these. They're the ones there that are sanctified, holy, both spirit, soul, and body. They're the ones that have mortified the deeds of the flesh. They have killed crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust through the Holy Ghost. Those are the ones that would do the will of God and fulfill the purpose of God in their individual lives. And that's where we are now. Any person does not do the will of God will not make the kingdom of heaven. Jesus states that. 
Matthew 7. Not all the say to me, Lord, Lord, will be able to enter in. But only ones, uh, the ones that do the will of God. Jesus stated that. In the kingdom uh, of heaven, in the constitution and the bylaws of the kingdom of heaven, that's stated as an eternal truth. They began to profess under Jesus. They went to church. They prophesied in his name. They did many wonderful works in his name. They cast out devils in his name, but they didn't do the will of God. Jesus will profess, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. They will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? We didn't do the will of God. To do the will of God, you have to be not only born again of the water and the spirit, but then... You have to grow, grow up into Jesus. That is the inward man, not the outward man. The outward man is perishing day by day. The inward man is renewed daily. And that, born of the water and the spirit, to repent and been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, born of the water. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're born of the spirit. Then you go on to, from newborn babies, Two, little children. What are the little children? Well, they have a greater revelation. They've grown. And what is that? 1 John 2, verse 12 through 14 says, I write unto you, little children. Why? Because you have known the Father. You know that Jesus is the Father. Jesus stated that. If you'd have known me, you should have known the Father. A Father also. Why? because he is the Father revealed. As stated in John 8, it's stated in Gen and John 14, you believe in God, believe also on me. In my Father's house and women are many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. That's at the right hand of God, made to sit together in heavenly places, what he did for us, not for him, for us. That's Ephesians 1. We're made to set together in heavenly places is what Jesus wrought to usward, the body of Christ. Well, Jesus has been glorified by the Father's own self. And he states that I have many mansions and I go to prepare a place for you. Where I am, there you may be also. That's the place for you, not for me, for you. And he states that whether I go, you know, in the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? Where is he going? All the way to the Father. Not beside him, not around him. To the Father. Glorified with the Father's own self. Set down, not S-I-T, but S-E-T. Set a forever subtle state of glory. Down with my Father in his throne. Revelation 3.21. Whether I go, you know. Your way, you know. Thomas saith to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, I am that truth, the spirit of truth. I am that life. I am that spiritual life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. From henceforth you both know him and have seen him. Philip standing by that, Lord, show us the Father, and that suffices us. That will be sufficient. Jesus said, Have I been so long time with you? And yet, hast thou not known me, Philip? Wait a minute. Philip said, I know who you are. You're the Son of God. No, Jesus said, Me, the man Christ Jesus, is the Father. How can that be? He goes on and says, He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Philip, to show us the Father? Believe me that I am in my Father and my Father in me. Or else believe me for the work's sake. What work? Jesus healed the sick, cleansed the leper, raised the dead, cast out devils, opened blind eyes, loosed the dumb tongue, the lame walk, captain went free. 
Blessed is he whom serves not offended in me. Then he goes on and says, the words that I speak are not mine. If you don't believe me for the work's sake, the words that I'm telling you are not mine. Well, then whose are they? Jesus states, they're the Father's. The words that I speak are not mine, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He's the one doing the works. Why? Because the word of God and the words that he speaks are literally confirmed to be the word of God by signs, miracles, divers, wonders, and gifts of the Holy Ghost that Jesus did in the days of his flesh. God confirming his word. Then, he said, these works shall you do, and greater works than these shall you do. And it sticks to us in this end time. And the song of Moses is because that many in the church in the last days will be turned to other gods. They'll deny the only Lord God, as in the epistle of Jude. As Paul stated in Acts 20, 29, immediately after my departure, grievous wolves shall come in, not sparing the flock. Who amongst you? will speak uh, perverse things. Peter says the same thing. Not only Paul, but Peter. Peter says in 2 Peter, 2 chapter, verse 1, 2, and 3, that, that you, can, you can read that in Peter's gospel. Not gospel, but in the uh, epistle of Peter. And he states very simply, but there were false prophets who among the people, even there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, among the church, who privily, privately, will bring in damnable heresy. Well, I thought Jesus was love and everybody going to heaven. No. Damnable heresies perverse things, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God. It's a damnable heresy. That's what Peter said. Even denying the Lord that bought them, redeemed them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And what's happening in the last days, we're seeing more and more turn away from the true one God, Jesus' only doctrine of Christ, the doctrine of Christ, who is the Father and the Son, same Spirit. You see that in 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He's that I cried, that have denied both the Father and the Son. Why? Because the Father is that invisible Spirit. Christ is that Spirit. But they've also denied the Son. Why? Because the Son of God is that indivisible spirit, that invisible spirit, I'm sorry, that invisible spirit made visible. One and the same spirit. They haven't so learned Christ. And he says that, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth will be evil spoken of. And he goes on and says, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you for money whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not my my goodness and that song of Moses warns us of this that they will turn to other gods little G-O-D-S and that is multiple persons in a Godhead. There's only one person. Hebrews 1, 3. Jesus is the express, not expressed, express image of his person. How many persons? One. One means one. <laughs> They'll say, well, in the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, 4, the greatest commandment of all, Mark 12, 29, the scribe asked Jesus, what's the first commandment of all? What's the dominant commandment? And Jesus states the Shema. 
Mark 12, 29. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That's the greatest commandment. That's the first commandment. And they say, well, now, wait a minute, Brother Bear. That's, uh, uh, that, that one is not Yaquid, it's Ekad. One means one. Just like Elohim is a plurality, not of persons, but of attributes. You see that in Gen Genesis 1, verse 1. Seven Hebrew words. Bereshit, Barah, Elohim, Hashemayim, Bayat, Hayertz. What? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And that Hebrew tells us, Bereshit, in the beginning, Barah, created Elohim. That's plurality. And him. But notice that Elohim is always used with a single Singular verb tense, never Elohim are God. Elohim is God. Elohim, God, is the Lord. Elohim, God. Well, what is God? And God is one. The Lord is one. Not tree, not three, not a trinity, not a triune. And he's not a binary. Neither is he a oneness. He is one. And that is Bereshit in the beginning. Bara created Elohim, God. Alav Tav. Now that Alav Tav is the A to the Z. In Hebrew, it's the Alav to the Tav. That is all the attributes of God from the A to Z. That's God. And all of those attributes is how God Create the heaven and the earth. Hashemayim, by your high earth. There's only one. And God said, let there be light. And God said, the word went out and created, but it's God, one and the same spirit, not a different person. And God said, let there be light. And there was. Well, God is one. And that is the whole truth of Christ that God is Christ, Christ is God, and every office of God. The Spirit itself in the, in the administrative office is the Father. Everything happens in and by through the Father. And who is no variableness of turning? And that is the Father of glory, the Creator. Who is that? It's Jesus. Colossians 1, 16 to 17, all things were created by Christ Jesus. Whether it be thrones, principalities, powers, Things visible, invisible, all things created by him. Well, that's the word, which is the Father, which is the Holy Ghost. 1 John 5, 7, they're the same spirit. Well, that is, then there is a different office of Christ called the Word. Well, the Father and the Word are the same spirit. But the Word reveals his thought, plan, purpose, and will. Well, that is Christ. The word was made flesh. John 1, 14. John 1, 18. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. How can he be in the bosom of the Father? Because it is the Spirit revealed in flesh. The Father revealed in a body of flesh. No man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son the monogamous euos are the only begotten God, monogamous theos, are the only begotten one, monogamous yakid, who is a monogamous ekad, meaning one, is that only begotten of God. He's the only begotten one. There'll never be another like him. You'll see that in Isaiah 43.10. Thus said the Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, the invisible spirit, Elohim, and my servant whom I have chosen. That's the man. He chose him? Yes. Who is he? That you may know and believe me and understand. Have perfect understanding. I am he. God is that servant. He goes on and says, before me, before God, there was no God formed. Neither shall be after me. God formed? Yes. A body of flesh. Who is that? God manifest. It's his own body. Then why did he pray the Father? 
because he made himself of no reputation as spirit to work salvation as a man and under the law. And even though it's Emmanuel, God with us, God, the spirit is still separate, separated by a metal wall of partition called the law from his own body of flesh. When you see that God working salvation in and of himself alone, work salvation by glorifying his own human back to himself, not another person of a Godhead. That's ludicrous. It's a lie. And they brought in these damnable heresies. Well, the, the Pharisees did it. They said, Jesus, you bear record of yourself. Your record is not true. You're not God. Jesus said, though I bear record of myself, my record is true. He goes on and says, when they say, where's your father? Jesus states, except you believe that I am he, John 8, 24, you shall die in your sins. Point blank. It's a damnable heresy. Swift destruction upon them. Whose damnation there swiftly comes. And it states there, this they understood not that Jesus spake to them of the Father. They still do not understand it. They just don't get it today in the present truth. And the whole Song of Moses are the ones that can sing it, are the ones that are Jesus only in the doctrine of Christ. And there is a witness against those uh, that will turn unto other persons of a Godhead when there's only one. And he states that. These will be, these will be a witness for me, God said, against the children of Israel that come against the one God. <clears throat> and he said, you'll turn to other gods. Verse, uh, that's Deuteronomy 31, verse uh, 20. They'll turn to other gods. Plurality, polytheism. Well, there's only one God, but three persons. You got three triune, and there's only one. There's only one person, Hebrews 1, 3. That's where we've missed it. Well, God is returning us to the truth that have a true heart to God. He's returning this revelation to the true people of God that will be saints, sanctified. A saint is a sanctified, holy, both spirit, soul, and body, knowing and following in they being established in the doctrine of Christ. There's not another. And he says, they will provoke God and break my covenant. Jesus is the covenant. And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song, there it is in Revelation 15, this song shall testify against them as a witness, the witness there will be of the Christ in the body of Christ, the church of the living God in Revelation 11. For it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imaginations where they go about, even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. This started way in the promised land of Canaan, for the children of Israel. Moses, therefore, wrote this song. We have it in Revelation 15. The same day and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua, Yeshua, the son of Nun, a charge and said, Be strong and of good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee thee with you and it came to pass when moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished that moses commanded the levites which bear the ark of the covenant of the lord saying take this book of the law put it in the side of the ark now remember in the testimony you had uh, Three things. Number one, you had the Decalogue. You had the tables of stone. Two, you had Aaron's rod, but it and brought forth almonds. And three, you had the, the manna, the pot of manna inside that ark. But in and beside 
beside in the side of the Ark of the Covenant, put this book in there and it will be read in tabernacles, not in Passover, not in Pentecost, but in the last season of God when he's perfecting his whole body for the whole revelation of Jesus to be revealed in and through the body of Christ. We have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of ourselves. The Lord is that spirit. And that's the message of the true church. And to put it in the side of the ark. And that it may be, therefore, a witness against them. Why? Because you've turned away to other gods. You've turned away from the only Lord God, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, uh, while I am yet alive with you today, you have been rebellious against the Lord. And how much more after my death? That's where you can see Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration. And we see the Song of Moses in Revelation 15. It's still that there's only one God today. And he says, Gather and to me all the elders of your tribe and your officers, and I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. Call heaven and earth to record? Yes, he's going on a formal record. For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves. Turn aside from the way. The way, the truth, the life is nothing but Jesus, which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days. A great evil shall befall all the people because of the curse causes will not come. Why? For out of the north a great evil shall befall all the inhabitants of the land. It shall be upon the head of the righteous as well as the wicked. Ezekiel 13, Ezekiel 21. And that will be God's sword taken out of his sheath against all flesh, against the righteous as well as the wicked. The good news is the righteous will stand. And he says there, and it says, and this evil will befall you in the last, the latter days. And there it is, because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord, provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And uh, Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel, the words of this song until they were ended. And then we have the oath to the tribes in Genesis, I'm sorry, and uh, Deuteronomy 33, Genesis 49, according to Jacob, Moses, according to the oath to the tribes, and Deuteronomy 33. Well, there you have it. Why? Because we turned away from the Lord our God, the only Lord God, Jesus Christ, the blessed and only, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, that only potentate, 1 Timothy 6, 15, 16, who only hath immortality, and we viewed out cisterns that can hold no water. Clouds with no rain, trees twice plucked up by the roots, bringing in damnable heresies not established in the doctrine of Christ, that Christ Jesus is everything that God is. He is the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. There he's are the one Spirit of God in different functions. I'm a father. I have a son and a daughter. I'm also a husband. I have a wife. I'm a neighbor to my neighbor next door. I'm a preacher. That's also another title. I'm a musician, a singer, and a keyboard player. All that's fine and good, but that's not my name. It's only one person of God. That's where we've missed it. Jesus is the Father. He always has been. He's the creator of all. Colossians 1, 16 to 17. He rose his own body from the dead. John 2, 19. There is only one God. And that is Deuteronomy 6, 4, the Shema. It's the greatest commandment of all, Mark 12, 29. We have hewed out the sepulchers that can hold no water. Walls that's dogged with untempered mortar has never been through the fire. We have served other gods with this ecumenical councils and synods of the Council of Nicaea, stating there's a trinity. The God-man of 451, Chalcedonian definition saying the Son of God was begotten according to his Godhead of the Father before the foundation of the world, which is a complete total lie. And we believed it. 
and a Protestant religion, for the most part, has followed the God-man. It, a pseudo-God, a God that is only that breaking him down, that the man is not God when the man is God. And there is where we have uh, hewn out these uh, uh, systems that can hold in the water, damnable heresies, these perverse things, and they are turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God, because grace comes at the revelation of Jesus. Without the revelation of Jesus, there is no grace. And that's 1 Peter 1. We'll see it. It's happening now. God is telling us to return to the true and living God. Why? How? He said, come and let us return to the Lord. For he hath torn, he will heal us. God is doing it through his judgments. He has smitten, he will bind us up. It's God trying to get us to turn to the true God and eternal life, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, the true Christ. And when we do, we'll be blessed. God will show forth these judgments for one reason, and all the seals, trumpets, and vows is to reveal Jesus Christ. That's the reason the book is called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the unveiling that all will know Jesus Christ and uh, from the beginning to the end that he is God alone and all that's left in the land will know him from the least to the greatest. What is it? The knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Not a trinity, not a tunis, not a oneness. But the man is God, has been God, and always will be God who made himself a body of flesh and blood. That man that came down from heaven in John 3, 13, made himself a body of flesh for our, for our sins to redeem us, justification, sanctification, ultimate glorification, and then went back to his former glory, God Almighty. He is one. There's not two, not three. Hero is a war of God. He is one. One means one. There it goes for your saying, Ekad, Yaqid, makes absolutely no difference. One means one. Many offices, many attributes, but one spirit. Well, if God's dealing with you, be sure and contact me. Dennis Spirit Ministries, we have ministers that are sold out for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Taking this gospel to the nation. God's called you for it. We'd love to hear from you. We'd like to be in the ministry and work together with you in the work of the ministry. You can write to me, Dennis Beard, Post Office Box 2906, Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. Or you can, uh, as there, simply download our app, Sailing God's People, or podcast, along with our streaming on our website, jcic.tv, register, and you give your comments as well as ask questions. Or you can message me on dennisbeard.org, sailinggodspeople.org, sailinggodspeople.com. There we'd love to hear from you. Until the next time, we pray that God perfect all that is lacking in each one of us, that we may all be presented blameless at the coming of the Lord, both spirit, soul, and body. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold, the real Jesus.